Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, if you could believe that, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here returning to Sister Wives Primacy. (gasps) The television show that launched this podcast some two years ago. I know, God. We started off just screaming into the (laughs) void, literally never expecting anybody to give a shit. No. (laughs) And that first week, like hundreds of downloads. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, this is an untapped audience filled with angry women just like us <laughs> and the rest is history yep um before we get into talking about sister wives we definitely want to give you the disclaimer honey please hide your wife and hide your kids this is a politically incorrect podcast we say a lot of bad words although we gotta stop that we're I know. getting demonetized girl on youtube oh youtube we also have very dumb and potentially inflammatory opinions and so if you're sensitive you might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. <laughs> but if you're down and ready to party with these two beauties, welcome to this dumpster. And if you are down and ready to party, you better be going to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We're reacting to MILF Manor, Couples Therapy. We just finished up Welcome to Plathville, and there's so much other shit up on there. I, uh, yes. <laughs> so much. <laughs> that's true. And it's also the best way to support us if that's what you want to yes. do. Finally, if you are watching on YouTube, please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because everything you do really helps us to grow as a community of rap- raccoons we need each other now more than ever we do so thank you in advance thank you so let's just do a road this far okay (laughs) yeah because we were always doing some kind of sister wives content whether it was in season and we were reviewing it week to week or whether we were doing rewinds like we're going to do tonight yeah we were always talking cody brown and robin wives yep (laughs) and the family (laughs) But then, of course, um, Garrison passed. Yes. And it was such a shock. And we were so unhappy and terribly sad and moved that we decided to take a little bit of a breaky-poo. Yeah. We had some other shows that we were reviewing, i.e. Vanderpump Rules in the Valley. Mm Mm-hmm. uh, We had a lot on our plate anyway, but we just on an energetic level, needed to take a step back and just kind of give it some breath. Yep. And so that is what we've done. We decided we'd come back after VPR wrapped up and the Valley is also wrapping up. So we've got more space. But at the same time, I kind of feel like we have a bit of a conundrum because there is this huge thing that exists, which is the tragic passing of Garrison brown and then we're watching this dumb show yeah that is you know silly and also filled with lies yeah we're having all of our reactions and we want to laugh and it's like kind of hard to reconcile those two things which is why i think time is so helpful but also for me and i want to ask you how you're gonna do it but for me i'm just gonna have to separate those in my mind me too like when we deal with at least the rewinds yeah when we deal with the rewinds, I'm just going to be back in like 2012, yep. just hating on this family for being liars <laughs> and fools. Yeah. I can't like think and feel like the sorrow of yeah. all of this and what it's leading up to so deeply because otherwise I can't do my raccoon job, which is very important, obviously. Obviously, <laughs> which is trashing Cody Brown and yes. talking crap about him. I agree completely. I just want to be able to like talk about it and then you know if garrison pops up we talk about it at that point in time we address it there but like we don't want to change necessarily the whole vibe of sister wife rewinds because we know that you guys love that and you love these recaps and stuff so i think separation's best i i i I don't want to change the vibe at all if we can help it yeah um, and we'll see if we can do it. Yeah. I'm just going to keep it open-ended, really, because sometimes we might be talking about something and it might be very sad and, and we're going to just allow ourselves to talk about it. But that's just kind of the 
attitude we have as we're going back in to, well, season four. Yep. This is the season when they're trying to buy the homes in the cul-de-sac. In Las Vegas. Still pretending everything's great. Mm -hmm. Kids are thriving. Marriages are doing so well. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we are in the timeline. And I'm just going to try and have fun with it. Me too. So don't hold it against me if I'm laughing, if I'm swearing, if I'm talking shit. That is just what we do. And that's how we do it. Exactly. Okay. I couldn't have said it better than myself. All right. (laughs) So before we get into this particular episode, when Cody's brothers come to town and Cody makes a fool of himself as usual, is there anything else around this situation that we want to talk about or has the family done anything since then that is noteworthy that we should hash out i mean there's been little tidbits here and there like we've talked a little bit about mary brown's hashtag worthy up business Mm -hmm. which is live and she's hosting facebook stuff i guess she's not been on instagram though she hasn't been doing her fridays with friends and i wonder why is it because she's maybe focusing on Facebook or is it because she got roasted (laughs) by the raccoons and everybody else probably a little bit of both Mm. I mean it's I mean her Friday was friend Fridays with friends were really embarrassing (laughs) honestly so many people showed up though she seems to be having some fun with it I thought they were kind of cringe personally I never never watched I just but I think lives in general are kind of cringe that's just me but Mm -hmm. she's got that business Christine's got her Airbnb that she's like constantly advertising Plus her menopausal plexus Mm -hmm. scheme. Yeah, which I think Janelle's part of now too. Well, she's been doing plexus for quite some time. But but the menopause menopause, one, Is she on the menopause locomotive? Yeah. Heading to Money Town? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I did see that Janelle and Savannah and Gabe were in Disneyland or at Mm -hmm. Disney World this past weekend. Yeah. And so I'm happy to see them out and about and doing family stuff. Yeah. Everything is, is very, very deep and yeah. sad but i'm glad that the family's moving on i think maddie recently was ill or something i don't remember any of that but i don't pay attention to maddie personally is mckelty still squawking into the ether <laughs> with all of her self-righteousness yeah her unearned white woman cringe <laughs> yeah which i don't participate in because no. i can't with her no or her husband no grubby too tony. many tacos too tony. many tacos tony yeah yeah, I haven't been keeping up on any of that. I really just kind of stepped away. And I Me too. unsubscribed from all of the subreddits. Oh my God, really? Yes. Well, a couple of them or one of the subreddits went dark after Garrison. Mm-hmm. Didn't come back for a while. And then when they did, there was like a lot of weird authoritative moderator bullshit. Ew. And so they started a new subreddit called Sister Wives Fans. And now that one's starting to become Stop. overly moderated. Why can't people just calm down? <laughs> oh it's just a bunch of middle-aged women yelling. <laughs> about Cody Brown just let us scream oh my god let us scream the internet is so crazy though and I feel like it's the downfall of society oh 100 like, percent. all it? these yes. people go crazy because of the internet it's not that deep it is not um but that's about it yeah that's where we are mm-hmm. and now we're going to be returning until <laughs> see sister wives season 19 comes back uh-huh. which i think is going to be this year i hope it's probably going to be around the end of summer like usual that would be nice i don't know though Yikes. i have heard that they've filmed like what happened with garrison Yes. So uh, we probably are going to be seeing more of that. And we know that they were filming at the beginning of yeah. the year, at the end of last year for season 19. So I think that's all in the can. I do think they picked up cameras mm-hmm. to address this issue with Garrison. Um, so I know it's coming back. I just don't know when. But until then, we, as a podcast, yeah. are going to be returning to our Sister Wives Rewind. Yes. And I'm excited. Me too. So we're like midway through season four. We're on episode seven mm-hmm. called Brown Boys to Vegas. All right. The la- the episode prior to this was the Valentine's Day episode where he was taking all the wives. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For their Valentine's Pretending Day Pretending he dates. wanted to take the other three wives mm-hmm. out for dates. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait Getting to them get their back bouquets. to Robin. Right. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> so we start this episode with Cody's brothers coming into town. I have he- a takeaway. What? I have a very important takeaway. Oh, well, what's your takeaway? My takeaway is that I notice all the time, and especially (laughs) in this episode, how Cody loves, and I dare say needs, to cosplay masculinity all the time. Like, his favorite things to do are, like, wrestle. Yeah. And in this episode alone, we see him at the gun range, 
shooting his guns. We see him riding motorcycles. Like he seems really invested in needing people to think that he's a real bro. He's a real man. Mm -hmm. He's an alpha man, alpha Mormon. And straight. And I don't believe it. I feel like it's a compensation. Yeah. Like you're in Vegas. Why don't you go to a casino? Why don't you do as the Vegas people do? But no, you want to act like you're such a man. Well, because he is. Don't you see him in those Wrangler jeans with the bedazzled booty <laughs> pockets? <laughs> no, I mean, he God. is the epitome of masculinity with his little tight Shirley K- Temple K- curls. Uh, yeah. No, like I think real manly men don't have to <laughs> force themselves to do manly things so everybody sees them. They're yeah. just manly men. So I just, oh, for sure. It really smacked of this forced masculinity that I think is covering what that one chick said, I think in season one, when he goes back and he sees all of his high school friends and they say, oh, we all thought Cody was flamboyantly gay. (laughs) Not just gay, not one of those down low gay kids in the 80s we all wondered about. No, flamboyantly gay is what his high school friends thought of him. I mean, I can see it. I've been seeing it this whole entire time. I think Robin totally pegs him. I think he's got something. That's why he goes to Robin because she gives him what other wives can't. Oh my god! I'm just I don't know. I just think it's either like he's cosplaying masculinity or he's just like constantly competing, especially with his brothers. And it's so cringe because I'm like, you're in your 40s. Like, why are you competing with Scott? I know <laughs> who's old as fuck. What a dud! I know who orders ice water at the Pioneer Bar. I I'm know. like, I can't. so lame, <laughs> super lame. But that's just Cody. I think he always has to be the best he always has to be the biggest he always has to be the richest the most famous he's an arc so yeah. it's it's totally he's an arc on track who's for him. afraid of his inner femininity <laughs> so i'm just gonna leave that out and there. homosexuality that's right as we start this rewind thank you for indulging me <laughs> well we've got the three brothers that are over it's scott who's the old fart and yeah. he's got two <laughs> he's got two wives Um, And so he's a polygamist. He lives up in northern Wyoming. And then we have Curtis, who's a monogamous, and Mm -hmm. he's the non-denominational Christian. He does not believe. Interesting. In the Mormonism. In the Book of Mormon. Yeah. In the polygamy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting. And then we have Michael, who comes later in the episode, who's super young. He's like 20-something. He looks like Logan. Kind of, yeah. For sure. And he's... A polygamist, but he's only got one wife right now because he's on the hunt. He's on the prowl. Is it me or were there a couple of head wounds here on display? Like Michael had like this big scar Mm -hmm. on the back of his head. And then Scott had kind of this weird line of hair on his forehead. I'm like, are you guys just on farms with farming implements getting injured in your head parts? Probably. I mean, they did say they're farm kids from Wyoming. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that would make sense. And That's very strange. Cody's dad was an actual masculine man. He was a rancher. <laughs> yes. So he was a tough dude. So I wouldn't doubt it. Mm-hmm. They probably all have scars. I wonder if Cody's hiding one under his Maybe. Um, Maybe that's hair. why he's so invested <laughs> Maybe. in his fro. He would look a lot cooler if he just showed his scar. Oh, my gosh. Imagine if he shaved his head. I know. Grew out like a little bit of a beard. Yeah. That would be awesome. I mean, not awesome, but like it would be so much better than what he's doing now. So much better than his hair. Yes. And the season four Cody hair is so bad because it's flat iron to filth. And so it's all dead and dry. I can't. But like also a little bit of curl in there. Yeah. Like he's the also wave. taking in a, a curling iron or Robin is and just one little <laughs> wave right here and right there. He's preposterous. It's ridiculous. He looks so stupid and I love it. I know. Me too. And then they go on a motorcycle ride to the biker bar are like cool manly men do right which is really embarrassing because when have we ever seen cody ride a motorcycle well and one of the brothers is riding bitch i know i'm just like couldn't you rent another motorcycle do you really have to put curtis on the back of his brother's bike i I was just embarrassed a little bit for these dummies it was really embarrassing well then going to the biker bar i'm like what what are we doing and then they order ice water i know and the bartender's like, yeah, coming right up. <laughs> so sure thing. So stupid. Super freaking weird. This is also like right before they go to the bar, Curtis also makes a comment. He's like, let's bring on the ladies or whatever. Oh, yeah. And Robin hears it. And she's like, "Um, Cody, Curtis said you're bringing on the ladies. What does that mean? Yeah. I'm like, chill out, lady. Do we think that she was playing or mm. do we think like she was 
honestly concerned that they were going to be picking up new wives. I think, new wives for everybody. <laughs> I think she was wanting to come across like she was playing, but I think it was serious. Mm. Because why are you asking about it? The yeah. other wives don't give a fuck. No. Get out of here, Cody. I mean, and you shouldn't if you're a polygamous girl. Right. You should always alter or entertain the idea mm-hmm. of more wives, but it's Robin Brown. So now I did notice when they were at that Pioneer bar that Cody kind of used this as a segue after ordering ice waters, <laughs> that it was kind of an article of their faith that they don't drink alcohol. Yeah. So I was wondering if Curtis ordered a beer at the bar. I thought there was an amber liquid that he had. In I his think mason. he did. I think he had a drink. Yeah. The other two did not have a drink. Yeah. And I just find it very interesting because now, I don't know, eight years later, 10 years later, Cody's being photographed outside the Piggly Wiggly with a bunch of beer in his car. Yeah. Mary's getting up on the Instagram live. Drunk as fuck. Having a wine Friday. <laughs> Christine has a full bar in her house. Like these. And so does. Janelle, she had yeah. like that wine cabinet. So all these people are drinking. So if it's an article of your faith not to drink, and now you are drinking, are we supposed to maybe presume that you no longer believe in Mormonism? I think that's the correct assumption there. Because I mean, towards the end of season 18, they were all kind of questioning their faith besides like Janelle. Like Janelle was really the only one that was like, no, I still believe in Kolob. <laughs> and I love my God. So <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was interesting. You're so though. dismissive. What? Of a whole religion. <laughs> no. But I stand. It's a cult. <clears throat> yeah. Well, every religion is kind of a cult. Exactly. I mean, that's the definition of a cult. But yeah. Yeah. Well, but like Mormonism, especially. The salamanders. Well, and, and Scientology. And, it's like, yeah. Well, Christianity I mean, is pretty crazy, too. We got yeah. a virgin birth. We got somebody getting sure. raised from the dead. Two people getting raised from the dead. <laughs> Walking on water. We've got locusts. I mean, it's a little nuts. Yeah. It is. All of it's nuts. But yeah, I thought it was weird that they even go to a bar because Scott's like so uncomfortable with it. This old man time is just in there like, why am I here? Old man river. <laughs> I felt kind of bad for him. But then meanwhile, while the guys are at the biker bar, the girls are like, we're going to show Erica, Curtis's wife, who's also there, a night out on Vegas. It's going to be so amazing and so lit. So for me, that's like we're going to the bar. Yeah. I'm wearing a mini skirt. Going to the casino. I'm going to vape a little bit. I'm going <laughs> to wiggle my ass around. I'm going to dance on a bar somewhere. Coyote ugly. Sure. Here I come. Yeah. But not these women. <laughs> no. They go to like a sip and paint, but they're not sipping anything. They're just painting pottery. <laughs> of course, they're not sipping anything. They're painting pottery boring i'm mary in this scene because mary's like i don't like crafts Mm -mm. i don't like to paint i don't like to do this shit and that is how i feel as well yeah it is so boring it's so matronly (laughs) well like what are we doing robin has a full ass craft room and i think christine has a craft room and i know a lot of you probably have craft rooms so i don't want to you cross stitch i totally love crafting it's just like I wouldn't pick that as like a group date Out or like a group fun thing for Vegas. Like right. go to a sushi bar yeah. or go to like a little like cocktail bar or something and order mocktails. Like you don't have to do anything crazy, but I just thought it was weird. And like the disparity between Cody's brother time, like he gets to go to a bar, he gets to go to the shooting range and then they go or out to a casino, a casino for dinner and have dinner. But the wives get to paint pottery and then later make really bad <laughs> homemade sushi. <laughs> And they're trying to cut this sushi and it's just getting (laughs) squished into the cutting board with all of the children running around. So embarrassing. What a great night. Thanks. So fun. This has been so much fun. Thanks, ladies. It's great. I just felt bad for them. But meanwhile, at the bar, the guys kind of have a conversation. Like, they just get into it right with Cody. They're like, "Um, so what are you going to do about your living situation, dude? Because this is a mess. Mm -hmm. Scott talks about how he has two wives. He's got two houses right next to each other and it's perfect. He's like, I don't know what the heck's Cody doing doing Mm -hmm. this is stupid and cody's like yeah we can't afford the 40 percent down on this plot of or like these four homes Mm -hmm. that we had so we're gonna have to talk with our realtor later yeah so they're still trying to figure it out just to bring everybody up to speed they are looking for a living situation where all of the homes can be 
close or proximate to one another. And so, of course, they found the cul-de-sac, which they ultimately move into, although I guess it's a cul-de-sac across the street. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to see. I don't know. Yeah. But they found the cul-de-sac and they got super excited. But because their credit scores are so terrible and they don't have any money and they're fraudsters and frequently bankrupt (laughs) and scammers and And MLM losers. Yeah. They can't get a conventional loan. So that poor, sweet realtor is trying to figure out an unconventional loan in order for them to get their homes. And so what she came up with was, yeah, we can do loans, but you have to put 40% down. And when you're talking about all of the homes, and at the time, we think they were going for about four hundred and fifty to $500,000. So you're looking at close to $2 million. 40% of that is, I don't know, $750,000. To I don't know I can't do math, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot of money and they it don't is. have it, and so their dreams were dashed. Yeah, but then that changes a little bit in this episode. Yes, it does near the end, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then later, Michael, the baby brother, arrives, and this is where they take Michael to go to the shooting range. Michael talks about how he's on the hunt, on the prowl for a second wife, and then they kind of briefly talk about how. Um, no, it's actually, we don't actually hunt for wives. It's a courtship and it's a serendipitous experience and it's all spiritual. Okay. And then on the couch, we have Robin talking about the buzzing again. In you her gotta pants. You got to feel something. You got to feel something in your heart. Really? Spirit tells you. Oh my God, that's him. <laughs> Jump on it. In my pants. You got to feel something in your pants. And so once again, it is usually the women yeah. who get some sort of an, a witnessing feeling or effect and then they approach Tingle. in their pants. Yeah. And then they approach the man and ask, would it be okay, sir, if I join your family? Which apparently Cody thinks all of the OG wives did. Yeah. They all asked him. They all needed him, except for Robin. Of course. Uh Uh-huh. Right. Sure, Jan. They expect us to believe all of this. Yes. And circa 2012 or whatever, a lot of people did for some reason. Yeah. Because Robin's antics were not obvious yet. Not yet. And then the guys go to a shooting range while the girls make sushi at their home. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of embarrassing. The guys are going crazy, shooting their guns. Cody's shooting his new gun that he got for Christmas. So dumb. I mean, he's like screaming and shouting. He makes a comment. He's like, that just saved me a thousand dollars in therapy with my psychologist. Okay. As if you go to therapy. No. Cody. No. There's no way. It's cringe AF. And then after the shooting range, then they go to dinner. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of why they're talking with Michael about getting a second wife. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm working on it. It's like really weird. He's very young. Why do you need to be working on it? You're in your early 20s, even though you are balding significantly. (laughs) And I am sorry for you, sir. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, But like you already have one wife. You're so young. Like spend some time in the season of your life with your one wife that you have. But no, you want to start adding wives for God. Yeah. It's for Kolob. Totally. It's not for these nuts <laughs> my pencil it's not for that punani no it's for god yeah i'm just like ugh but we still have uh christopher who is the hold out non denom curtis curtis whatever <laughs> interchangeable white mormon guy number three um who would never do that so he's yeah sitting in his couch interview with his wife who i happened to like i thought Erica. she was pretty yeah. cool and he's just like i would never want to have to deal with four wives and Erica's Ever. like and if I wanted to enter into polygamy he would leave me yeah he's like I would separate and I think some of that felt to me a little bit like a trauma response be- on Curtis's on part Curtis's part mm. like hmm because he feels so strongly about it so much so that he would leave this woman that he loves very much and you can tell and so I'm kind of wondering what happened mm. in Win Brown's home and what he saw and how that made him feel yeah i wonder which mom is his because cody's one of 10 he's like the fourth oldest of 10 curtis is like 11 years younger than cody so i wonder where he's at in the mix like if he was cody's mom's son he could probably saw like win just be like over Cody's mom because it kind of is implied that he preferred Janelle's mom yeah but Janelle's mom came along later right Mm -hmm. wasn't there another wife in there I don't know can somebody clear that up because I think I've seen something about when having another wife not just those two and if that was the case maybe she was somebody who like had some of his children I don't Mm. know and that's why I'm just putting it out there Mm. I'm wondering if these are 
half brothers, half sisters, or if they're full brothers and sisters from Cody's mom. Yeah. Not sure. I'm sure something happened. But I think Curtis feels some kind of way because he's seen it. Yes. And of course, like, Cody's like, oh, yeah, like, we wish he would have, like, followed in our faith and everything, but we respect him. We support his decision. So I'm like, well, that's good because he's allowed to make his decision, but something tells me they all judge him for it. Which we're going to kind of get to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because the very next scene, Cody has to put on his pastor hat. His house church. And do a family sermon, which I'm just like, how often does this happen? (laughs) Just for the cameras, I actually think, because... I mean, we know they stopped doing it and they mm-hmm. stopped getting together. But I'm even questioning whether they really did it every Sunday in these seasons. And the kids are totally checked out. They don't want to be there. This is for the benefit of his brothers to look like the pious pastor of his family. Everything is for appearance sake. Oh, for sure. And like Christine even made a comment. I caught the caught this on my second rewatch. She was like, normally we hold individual sermons in our individual homes. So it doesn't seem like the whole family gets together Mm -hmm. for church that often. It seems like the wives are probably in charge. Oh, I totally misheard that. I thought she was saying that there wasn't a polygamous community in Vegas. That was true, yeah. We just hold our own church services in our individual homes. I didn't know that that meant the wives were conducting the services in their homes with or without Cody. That's what I'm thinking. Mm. Because at this point, like Cody's not always sharing his right. time equally with all of the wives. So I'm assuming the wives are kind of holding up yeah. that tradition, which so this whole thing is like so performative and weird. McKelty was there, mm-hmm. which I thought she was like not wanting to be a part of. I thought she objected to it either the season before this one or the one before that because she didn't think it was right that it was filmed. There was something about that that went against her idea of their religion, but Cody wanted to do it anyway because he's a malignant narcissist, (laughs) but she did not attend. But yes, she was here this time. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. And then Curtis has kind of like his own little sermon where he talks about something about people eating meat. It went over my head. I think it was like a scripture. Yeah, it was a scripture. And I think it was Jesus speaking about the choice to eat meat and how one man will choose to eat it, the other man won't. But we don't judge either man for their choices as to eating meat. And the broader implication was around, I think, spirituality, faith, and religion. In other words, some men choose to be Mormon and Mm -hmm. some men choose to be Christian and some men choose to be Buddhist. But we don't sit here in judgment of those people. We just continue to love them. And I thought it was just a really interesting thing to say because, again, he's going out of his way in his interstitials and throughout various conversations, Curtis is, to basically say, yeah, this isn't for me. I don't believe in it. I would never do it. And now he's standing up during church and basically saying you really can't judge me based on the bible for taking a different path Hmm. as if he has been judged oh interesting as if maybe he is kind of on the outside or an outlier Hmm. in his family just making me question how close these brothers really are that would make sense because their whole like segments just felt really weird Mm -hmm. and like forced i'm like You guys say that you see them every year, but it just feels like you guys are too happy (laughs) to like Mm -hmm. be around each other. And like Cody had mentioned earlier in the episode about how he's like a rule breaker. He doesn't follow all the rules like his brother Scott does, but he looks up to him for that. So I'm just like, if Cody's judging Curtis for his lifestyle, that's lame. I could see Scott being the judgy one, though. Me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Even judgy of Cody, because you've got four wives and you're not managing them well at all. No, they're not living next to each other. Mm -hmm. You're not doing polygamy the way that Scott's doing polygamy. So you're doing polygamy wrong. Exactly. And then they also have like kind of a conversation with Cody and the wives kind of on the couch where they're talking about how they've always raised their children to have the choice of their religion, but they would be very heartbroken if they didn't choose fundamental Mormonism. Right. And they speak specifically about Logan because Mm -hmm. in this season, Logan is just about to go off to college. And we actually have a scene with Janelle on the couch and she's moved to tears because she doesn't know if she's done enough to convey to Logan the importance and the beauty of her faith. And so it feels like... She doesn't know whether he's going to stay a Mormon, whether he's going to cleave to her faith as she is. 
And I'm actually wondering if Logan is a practicing Mormon. My vibe, my vibe check is that he is not. Yeah. I think he stayed in Vegas. Obviously, he just got married mm-hmm. to his longtime girlfriend. But I don't think he's Mormon. If anything, he's probably like mainstream Mormon, like LDS or like maybe Christian or something like that, if he even believes in anything. But if I was Logan, I would be like agnostic or something. I'd be mm-hmm. like, this is all stupid. <laughs> like yeah. This is all crazy. Obviously, my dad's a whack a doodle so I'm not going to be a part of it I don't know like I understood like the parent sentiment of like you want your kids to follow in your footsteps you want them to like carry on the traditions and stuff like that but it's like it's a little contradictory to be saying oh yeah we give our kids the choice of their religion but we'd be so devastated if they don't choose it and like mm-hmm. I want to convey the importance of my faith and what I right. believe it's like okay <laughs> just say you're forcing your kids or indoctrinating your kids right I, I don't know that they are i think that they are trying really hard to impress upon them that they would be so happy if they made that choice but i'm still kind of holding out thinking that they're okay with whatever the children choose to do because ultimately as time goes by they seem to be okay with the various decisions that some of the children are making well. for example Leon well Cody and Robin aren't okay with Leon well allegedly in in the moment when Leon came out true yeah Robin was the one who seemed to be the most accepting at first yeah yeah but I mean that could have all been false I mean obviously so much was false and Mm -hmm. I don't think Leon and Cody and Robin talk now oh yeah, yeah I don't think they talk at all and then after the whole church sermon then we have the final scene which is Cody and the wives which meeting with Mona. Which is the most Mona. exciting scene because this mm-hmm. is where we're getting to the finances the when Mona actually says with her mouth ball and her words that like of course you guys couldn't get a conventional loan but maybe with some time you can improve your credit scores. Mm-hmm. Like oh my god if that were me <laughs> and you're saying that out loud <laughs> on, on television TV? I would be cringing so deeply. Yeah. That means none of them have good credit. None. None of them have good credit yeah much less like any fluidity any ability liquidity rather not fluidity yeah (laughs) liquidity to like have money to put down on these homes Mm -hmm. i mean and she's just kind of letting us know and i love it i know and they all seemed so like surprised especially janelle when she was like when mona was talking about the financing options she's like previously we could only get you guys into houses with unconventional financing and 40 percent down but with time, maybe you get your credit up and then you can qualify for 10% down, a regular conventional financing. And Janelle was like, wow, that's so amazing. I had no idea. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like if you're declaring bankruptcy and all this stuff, you have to have like some basic knowledge of like credit and how shit works, right? You would think. I would think, but they just act like they're so clueless. Mm -hmm. But you know, we know in the future they do end up getting approved somehow for these houses and they move into it. I don't know if it's the end of season four or like beginning of season five. I don't know, but it happens Mm -hmm. by the grace of God. And during this conversation, like most of them have hope. Like Janelle's like, cool. Like I'm still hoping for it. I'm a little hesitant, but I'm, I'm happy about it. Cody and Robin are super excited for it. Mary's excited for it. And Christine's like, I don't think it's going to (laughs) work. Right. Right. Well, and I think they end up taking those, short-term balloon loans right like where interest free for five to ten years oh, God. oh yeah interest right we free, talked yeah, about interest this free for, or, or no only interest only yeah interest yeah, yeah. only loans for five to ten years and then at the end of those 10 years you have to pay the fucking whole thing <laughs> yeah refinance it and or pay it and so that is what precipitated their ultimate move to flagstaff because i still don't think they got a conventional loan like the rest of most people do. Probably not. Not all, not all people. Well, yeah. even then, if you they couldn't afford to pay off that whole mm-hmm. They had thing. to go. That's yeah. why. <laughs> I know there were some conspiracy theories around Dayton, mm-hmm. Robin's son, going to university in northern Arizona. And so she was like the neck that turned Cody yeah. to get everybody to go to Flagstaff. But I'm wondering if it's more about the interest only loans coming mm. due, them being unable to pay it and having to Get the fuck out of Dodge. It might be a combination of both. She's just like, oh, it's super convenient. We can go back to Flagstaff. Because I can't remember when polygamy got decriminalized. I think it got decriminalized in Utah like while they were in Mm -hmm. Flagstaff. And that was what set Christine off to be like, why can't we just move back there? We all want to be back in Utah. Right. And that was like the divide that created everything. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see like what they ultimately get approved for and then how 
they move to Flagstaff because I stopped watching the show back in the day when they like way before they moved to Flagstaff. Mm. So I don't know any of that lore. I don't know really what happened. Mm -hmm. So that'll be cool to see though. Yeah, I didn't pick up the show until Mary's Catfish. That was when I started watching this. Was that in Vegas? That's in Vegas. That's like season what, 13, 12, Mm -hmm. 14, something like that. A few years before they ultimately move to to Flagstaff and we get the whole COVID arc. Oh God. So that's what kept me plugged in with yeah. the catfish. I thought that was so interesting and I kind of can't so wait to crazy. get back there. Yes. Me too. Well, that was an okay episode. Short but sweet. Yep. We learned a little bit about the money, which was good. They're yeah. going to have another opportunity if they wait a little while as the other lot is being developed yeah. to get potentially a conventional loan and move into their dream cul-de-sac. Oh my God. And we'll all be together. <laughs> It'll be so easy for Cody to manage his families, which he will not do. No, he will be at Robin's the entire time. Well, she has an office. <laughs> Okay, so he's he can work. work there for yeah. his job that he doesn't have. Totally. Yeah. To lease another Lexus. <laughs> and break down that pussy. Yeah, oh, for sure. Break it down, <laughs> For honey. sure. All right, well, any final thoughts about the Sister Wives? Are you glad to be back in the universe? I am. I kind of feel like I have, it's like I haven't ridden a bike in a while. So I yeah. feel like a little rusty, but I'm like excited to be back into Sister Wives because I missed it so much. Yes. And I know everybody was waiting for us to come back. So we're, yeah, back. we're back. And we'll be back next week to continue the conversation. Until then, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review. Five. It really helps us grow the pod and become famous. So we really appreciate it. And we will be back later this week to wrap up the Valley. I know, finally. Getting out of Bravo. Yeah. Going to be in TLC predominantly. So if you guys are following us for that, make sure to join us. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.